Now we're going to start adding input elements. So in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the first field set right after Lengen, let's go ahead and add an input element. Now an input element is an empty element, so it's self-closing like this. And we're going to be adding several attributes, and the attributes are going to make a real difference. The first one we're going to add is the name, and the name attribute identifies the name for the field. Remember that the field is what stores the value. It's like a variable, and this is the name of that field, or the variable name. So our first one is cust name, customer, short for customer, name. The next one is the ID attribute. And remember, we've used this one a lot. It's to be able to uniquely identify this particular element. And then the last, the next one that we're going to add <coughs> is the type. Now notice how this gives us a whole bunch of types. In fact, if we scroll down here, we see lots and lots of different types. And these types will actually create different input controls or widget controls. And so we, when we pick it, it, it'll make a difference. The one that we're going to pick right now is text, and that's the default. <clears throat> Even though it's the default, we want to go ahead and specify that this is a text element. Now, if we save this and we go back and refresh our page, in that field set, we see that text box. And we're going to be adding several of these, and each one's going to be for something different. So this one, we want it to be for the user to enter their name. So we're going to write name, and we want to put an asterisk. And the asterisk will stand for that this is required. <clears throat> Up here it says that, right? Required values are marked as an asterisk. Now if we save that and refresh, there we've got the word name asterisk, and then we've got an input box. Okay, let's see what else we're gonna add here. We're gonna add several of these. So let's go ahead and each one's going to have its own text that's by it. So the next one is street address. The next one is an input. Again, we're going to do an input. We're going to give it a name. And the name is on this one is customer street. So just C-U-S-T street. And then we're going to give it an ID and the ID is street. We're going to give it a type, and this one is also a text. And then we're going to close that input. Okay, so several of these, so let's just keep going. City, and this is an input. Name equals customer city, C-U-S-T city. And then ID equals city, and type equals text. Okay, let's just stop and take a look and see how these are looking. So there's our name and an input box, street address input box, city, and input box. Okay, keep going. We've got a few more of these to do. State, uh, input, it has a name, and that name is going to be customer, C-U-S-T, state. ID is going to be equal to state, and type is text. You can kind of see why this is a default. At least when we get started, we'll be adding different ones later. Postal code. Again, that's an input. Oh, that was another HTML element that my editor's helping me with. So again, we want to do an input and a name attribute. And this is the customer zip. ID equals zip. and type equals text. Okay, two more to go. Phone number. This is an input. 
Now the name is customer phone, C-U-S-T phone, ID equals phone. Now the type on this one is going to be different. So on this one, set the type to T-E-L, and that is for a telephone number. So that will be slightly different. And the last one we're going to do right now is email, and this one is has an asterisk as well. It's required. Okay, there's the editor helping me again. I have to undo it. Input name equals customer email, C-U-S to email. ID equals mail. Now this one, the type, again, we're going to choose something a little bit different, and it's email type. And then close that input and save it. We go back and refresh, and there we have all the words and the boxes that we've entered.